Tell us about the deal, and which is a cute thing, about Michael and Adidas and Nike. Can you talk about that deal? You know, it's funny. There's a movie coming out, Kermit, about how Michael signed with Nike. And it, I'm sure it's going to be a fun movie. A very good friend of mine, Jerry Cardinal, owns a big piece of Tom Cruise's production company, Skydance, who did the movie. And the, the essence of the movie is how Sonny Vaccaro convinced Michael to go with Nike. Now, the truth is that when the Olympics were over, I wanted Michael to sign with Nike and Michael wanted to sign with Adidas. And our company, as you know, represented Adidas. They represent the owner of Adidas, Horst Dostal. And um, Michael said, look, I don't want to go with Converse, which I wore in Carolina. I've never heard of Nike. You know, I, just sign me with Adidas. So I said, Michael, this is like picking a college. You have to take visits to these companies and meet the people and see what they have in store for you. He said, David, I've had a grueling season in Carolina. I just spent weeks with Coach Knight, who ran us into the ground. Yeah, you you know, Knight, I, I love Bobby Knight, but he's a demanding coach. And he said, I'm not going. Now, this is the very first thing I ever asked him to do after he signed with us. And he's turning me down. And I was really upset. So I called his mother. And I said, Mrs. Jordan, if we're going to work together, Michael could pick any company he wants. But it's like picking a college. He has to take some visits. And I want to teach him how to pick the company. I don't want to just pick it for him. Uh, you know, I don't want him to pick it in, in the abstract. I want him to understand what he's picking. And she says, David, don't worry. You know, Michael will be on that plane. Now, in the meantime, Michael's tie to Nike was not Sonny Vaccaro. It was George Ravlin, who was the assistant yes. coach on the, Olympic, on the Olympic team. And they became very close. And But neither George nor Sonny could even convince Michael to get on a plane and see Nike. Forget about going with him. They couldn't even get him to, to visit. I never talked once with Sonny ever about the deal. I made all the deals at Nike with Rob Strasser, who you know. Um, and, and so we but, took- but Before people go, David, your personality though, as, and as an agent, wasn't an aggressive personality. And because it was at your beginning, I'm amazed that you got Michael you, you get Michael to do something because you were just a, a I was his mother. I got his mother to do it. I mean, I was, okay. he wouldn't do it. He wouldn't do it. So we went out to see Nike Kroon and it was, it was a classic. They created a music video. It was just the beginning of music videos to all his college and Olympic highlights. And they had a, a they had the Pointer Sisters jump. They had Van Halen jump. Uh, the song I'll wear my, it was a great video. And Strasser was so nervous he couldn't get the machine to start. And he's sitting there like sweating. And George's looking at him like, he looked like he hated it. So then we, we finished that meeting. And um, oh. and, and, the, and the, the funny part was that, you know Howard White from Maryland. So Howard, oh, yeah, a good friend of mine. Howard's a great guy. And Howard was the only African-American uh, yes. executive in the meeting. And he showed up about 30 minutes late. So, so Strasser can't get the machine to work. Howard's late. And I'm thinking, God, he's going to fire me when this meeting is over. <laughs> so we leave the first room. We go into the boardroom. And Strasser presents a line of clothes and shoes to, to Michael. And at the very end of the meeting, Phil Knight walks in. And he's sitting in the back. And just as the meeting's about to end, Strasser says, Michael, uh, I know you like cars. And he reaches into his breast pocket of his suit to pull out, and Phil Knight is convinced he's going to pull out the keys to like a very expensive Mercedes, and Phil Leary is clutching his heart, Cohen. And I know Phil, pulls, I know Phil. Strasser pulls out two, two little bottle, bottle cars, like one inch mini cars. And so anyway, go to dinner, and at, at this point, Michael has not cracked a smile in eight hours. He, I know he's bad at me, he's probably bad at his mom, you know, for dragging him out here, he doesn't like it. And so at the end of dinner, I was about to go back, I whispered in his ear, you know, I hardly knew him. And I said, like, so Michael, like, what'd you think? And he goes, God, this is amazing. I don't want to go anywhere else. You could have blown me away, Kermit. I realized at that time that this young 20-year-old player is really smart and he's an amazing poker player because he never, ever revealed an emotion during the meeting. He kept everything close to the vest and he never went to another meeting. 
Okay, um, well, what were they offering, David? So we we so I demanded I demanded of Strasser. I said, if you want to sign this guy, the two market leaders are Converse and Adidas. You have to treat him like he's a tennis player. You have to create a line for him of shoes and clothes as if you were Arthur Ashe or Stan Smith or Bjorn Borg or you know Tiger Woods later on, Arnold Palmer. And so after that meeting, he came to Washington in August and it was hot as hell. They had turned off the air conditioning of the building, it was the weekend. And Strasser sweated like Strasser looked like John Madden. Was he an overweight man, if I remember right? Was he yeah. Overweight? yeah. Big, he has about 350 pounds with a big yeah. sort of reddish beard. And he said, okay, you know, we may be willing to give you a line. What do you want to call it? Now, in the trade, when, when an athlete has his own shoes or clothes, it's either called a signature shoe or an autograph shoe because it has his name on it. So people will know that it's Kobe Bryant or Steph Curry or whomever. And so I said, are you kidding me? What do you want to call it? I want to call it Michael Jordan. What, do you, what else do you call an autograph shoe? And he said, no, David, we are not going to call it Michael Jordan. I said, really? Why not? He said, two reasons. He said, first of all, no one's going to believe that a 21-year-old basketball player is going to be sitting in his apartment in Chicago designing shoes. It's got no credibility. And second of all, he said, the designer craze in America where, where designers are slapping the names on everything from you know, sunglasses to beach chairs to cars, to run his course, you know, it's over. So he said, so if you want to have a line, you have to come up with a name. And I wanted to get up and strangle him, Kirby, because in the trade, it's there's never been an athlete who has a line that's not known by his name. You know, whether it's O.J. Simpson, Pelé, the greatest of all time. And I guess my anger gave me a rush of adrenaline. And it took me like 30 seconds, and I came up with it, Air Jordan. I said, okay, I got a name for it. I don't want to say what I called Strasser. Uh, you have to bleep it out. <laughs> I said, okay, blank, I've got a name for you. We're going to call it Air Jordan. I said, Air because he plays in the air and Air because you've just developed this amazing new technology for your soles and your running shoes that cushions the athlete's foot. And, and the artist who was with him, Peter Moore, literally in five minutes sketched the first logo with the basketball and the wings and we're off, off to the races.